let's jump to the launch of your career, which was Borat. Yeah. That was your big break. How do you, as someone who doesn't have that much acting experience at the time, especially in such a major film, how do you not have any ambitions? For many of us, it was even just hard to watch some of the scenes that you were doing. How were you able to take drugs? Did you drink? Like, what did you do before those scenes that you were actually... Well, at 13, I was in every drama play in junior high school. I was in every play, and I ran the theater department at Garfield High School, and I went to East L.A. College in Cal State Long Beach, and I have a B.A. in theater. Oh, I did not know that. I know that. All these years that I uh -huh. knew you, I did not know that. I did 120 that. appearances before Borat, and... Borat, I just acted like my uncle in Armenia, and I ran around naked. I said that a million times, that if you, if he woke you up because there's a fire, he'd wake you up and say, put this on, come on, let's go, let's go. But if you pissed him off, he'd run after you naked. And it's cool, it's cool. So I, I used that part. But yeah, I, I was, but it was a big break. I thank you, God. But the... The way I was treated wasn't uh, up to how I felt it should be. So the when they asked me, by, by, by my other postdocs, when they asked me to do Borat 2, I asked them how much. They said how much. I said no thank you. So I didn't think. So I didn't think I had any respect from the other star, and I really truly didn't think they wanted me, and I didn't want to go through the uh, humiliation, the private humiliation of, of working again with him, so I didn't do it. I was in London shooting Mr. Mayfair, which is four films, but I'm in three of them. Starring Armand Desante, Stephen Bauer, and myself. And we're monsters. When they sent me the script, my name was Ira. And I said, I don't want to play Ira. I wanted to be an Armenian character, Armin. And the director said, sure, whatever you want. And I was Armin. And I was able to bring in, you know, come on, let's go to an Armenian restaurant. Let's do this, let's do that. It was I felt more comfortable. Is there anything that you would not be willing to do on camera? They asked me, uh, Kumar and somebody went to London and they asked me to do a scene in the movie where I was supposed to be a uh, uh, prisoner and I was telling him how to treat the guard. And there was a one specific act and I said, no, I don't want to do it. And they said, okay, I have 50 grand. I said, no, I don't want to do it. I ran around naked. That's it. That, in that, it worked. And it was okay. And it just felt like, okay, this is what, what happened. In but, some ways, being Armenian gave you an edge because you got to incorporate, like you said, your own oh, yeah, yeah. into your character. You even spoke Armenian. So yes, and a lot of people saw the film and then showed it to their grandfather and their fathers because they could understand that he was an army. It was really cool. But also Armenians are a little bit conservative on that front, so did it also um, create a little bit of backlash for you? Did no. You? So you feel like all of the feedback that you got Five. Five backlash. Five. backlash. Five. One lady at the uh, church, she says, and I said, no. Uh, another one was at uh, Armenian, favorite Armenian chicken place. And she said, uh, and I said, do no Erdu I says, apartment daris. I Oh, oh. So, I mean, they don't understand the capitalism, you know? Yeah. And also, I was 120 pounds heavier, and you can't see me. So, I was okay with it. Well, 
Well, that, that was a good one. We've been out to many of the same events. Uh, you get really super hot girls running around after you, taking pictures with you and hanging on your arm. Do you feel the difference between before your role in Laura and after, and how do you treat the attention that you get? It's, in my opinion, negative attention. It's because somebody wants something. Uh, those young, beautiful women have never gotten outside of the club with me. So, uh, it's all malarkey. And people want to take a picture, so they show. Now a lot of people are taking the picture, so I'll remember. Like, look, that was us three years ago. Okay, okay, injured them. I took a picture. That's my job. So, uh, and as for the women, really, uh, I haven't had any luck in the last two years I've been single. So. Do you feel like you are typecast because of Borat and you have more difficulty getting roles? Yes. You, yes. So I don't even have to. No, you don't because my question. Yeah. They, they are always going with crazy old man accent. And that's fine. I don't mind it. It got me famous. It's and it's very comfortable. I have three, three or four sitcom ready to go with that guy. But Mr. Mayfair was me. I played me. I played no accent. I, I, it was a lot of fun. And I hadn't done that for, I don't know, about five, six, seven years. I hadn't, everything had been uh, the guy from Borat, do something from Borat. So. What is your dream role now? My dream role, I don't know if it's ever going to happen because everybody is 18 years old, but it would be to be in a Scorsese film with uh, his guys. Pacino, uh, uh, De Niro, Pesci, I see him at the uh, golf course, but I would have loved, I almost got into the last one. All. What happened is, what they always say, they went another way. And then when I saw it, and it was a skinny guy, okay, they went another way. Because the worst thing is, we went another way, and get lost in my ass, what are we? That's me. That's me. Yeah. So, but it's a, it's a business, and right, we have to love it. No... So what is your process? Do you try to do a lot of the networking yourself and creating relationships and, and maybe based upon your relationships try to also get certain roles or do you always go through an agent? No, no, process? no. Agent is good to have because you need that person to call the job that you've already set up so they can work on it and do the finances. Uh, a manager can't negotiate, so you need the agent. But uh, a lot of this stuff, like uh, Mr. Baker, that was me and a manager. I mean, it was a... Uh, uh, there, there, I have an agent in London, I have an agent in Atlanta, uh, and, I mean, everybody says, Hi, Azamat has now turned into Hi, Cobra Kai, because that thing just took off. When I first did the first episode, they were still under... Uh, YouTube, but I flew first class, I had lobster for lunch, everything was great, so I said, you guys are a YouTube show, and I agreed to do this because of what it is, because my sons watched all of the, the Karate Kid movies, but who's paying for this lunch? They said, don't worry about it, it's Google money. So it was great, and then when they got on Netflix, they were like the number two, number three uh, watch show. So I'm very happy. Uh, the fourth season is coming, and it's all good. I, I, th th this, this virus has knocked a lot of stuff out of a lot of people. Yeah. But I think end of the year will be good. I got it. I got two red, blue, and orange ones. Uh, 
So for somebody, for a young person who wants to break into the film industry right now, is there any practical advice that you can give? What are some practical steps they can take to break into the movie industry? There are plays that they're doing in uh, uh, Soho. There's, there's a place, there's on Santa Monica, and there's four, five, ninety-nine big seat theaters. Don't think you know everything. You got to go. You got to get into classes. They have classes with uh, casting directors. They have classes with uh, uh, agents. Go get into the mix because the problem is everybody says, "Oh yeah, I, I, I want to do it." I did a thing on uh, Ray Donovan. I did four episodes Ray Donovan. I had a nephew, that guy had a nephew. When are we going? Isn't it over yet? I mean, we've been here, what, eight hours already? I said, hey, buddy, this is what you wanted to do. This is 12 hours a day. I mean, outside of this, it's, yeah, it's glamour and wonder. This is work. You'd think they paid that kind of money for you to just look good? That's only a third of it. So, you know, I feel bad if you come from the Ukraine and from Ohio, and they think I'm, I'm very attractive, and Joe told me I'm talented. I know you came back very disappointed from Armenia because you weren't able to open the studio that you wanted. Would you consider uh, going back and trying again? Would you consider uh, now trying to open a production company? You know, it was my partner, Arson, who we dissolve uh, Hollywood Film Partners so he can go because Armin uh, Miriam came here and said, which one of you is going to go be the first film commission? And Arson went and they did a lot of work. There was a lot of confusion and frustration and people that were upset because of the old system. But we're, we're going. We're, we're, the only problem is going to be the government and how they react. They have they've already in the parliament they've discussed the tax credit. So it's a great thing for the country. Because uh, in Croatia, eight eight hundred thousand dollars a week on uh, uh, Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones that's the ended up to three million uh, uh, absolutely that's the helps. example I always give to it will help and, and I also think it will help in security because right now, how ah, what 50% of 30% of the world knows Armenians are nice people. I want every film that's made there to say made in Armenia. I want somebody to say, no, Armenia's uh, present, it's, it's relevant. People will be upset if we destroy it right now. I don't, think, I, I don't think anybody can care. So I'm hoping that way. Because the diaspora is what's kept these people pretty well. I mean, we're there for anything. In 94, people from Montebello bought a tank and went to Armenia and fought. So uh, the problem just is it's too big. If it was only one that we were fighting, just out of, out of soul, we would. But if Israel's selling them uh, drones and America's not doing anything about Israel and, and Palestine, what do you do about Israel? So we have to do it. Yeah. Do you feel like being of Armenian has given you an advantage in the industry or has it been a little bit harder to break in? Because, for example, for me, when I was first starting out in TV production, it was actually a huge advantage for me to be Armenian because even knowing you, I had met you at an event and it was my first time. I had a, I had a job as a talent producer and I had to do bookings for this new studio. I had no idea how to get new bookings because as you know, publicists, they don't want to book their clients on a yes. new show. Yeah, when you don't have any kind of uh, experience, other guests haven't been on, it's really hard to get the first guests. And you were kind enough to be one of my first guests on a TV show that we were doing called Hollywood Today Live, which later got picked up by Fox. And you know, we started off as a little internet show, and then it was 
was on Fox, but you were one of my first guests, and it was such an advantage. You know, she called me at 9.30 in the morning today. <laughs> Can you be here for an interview? I said, she, I haven't even woken up yet. Okay, can you be here at 10? Yeah. So, yeah, I, if Armenians don't help Armenians, what, what are we going to do then? What, what, what else is left? Let's just give the keys to uh, Vladimir Putin and call it something else. We, we have always been like that. That is one of the good things. Hey, I just thought of something. This is a coffee house with booze? Get up here, just take a picture in front of my dad's painting. Yeah. For a sec. Okay, let's, let's get this clear for sure now. Yes. I am not getting up. No, no, I'm getting up. My <laughs> Thousand people would have married her. She went to Armenia <laughs> and married a handsome guy. Big deal. Yeah, but I think the guy was definitely worth it.